All right, welcome to another video, and in this time we're going to be going over two, two more big O notation energy questions. And as always, uh, when we go over these, the first thing we're going to do is analyze the code, make sure we kind of understand what's going on. Okay, uh, so let's go and get into the first example. So here we have a single function called print order unordered pairs. Uh, something to note here is that there's two inputs here. We have uh, one, we have two different arrays, and um, that's make sure you just understand that. One thing to look at is what is the input because it matters, right? Uh, okay, so let's look what it's doing. Look, there's two for loops, uh, a nested, two nested for loops, and then we have a comparator operation, and we're just printing out something. So the outer loop is going through going through all of the first array, the inner loop's going through all the second array, and then we're comparing if the value at index i is less than the value at index j um, for each array. And then we're gonna print them out if, it, if they are, okay? All right, so this is gonna print it, we're just printing out uh, some number of pairs, depending on the values at those indexes. All right, well, one of the first things we're gonna do is we're gonna eliminate things that we don't care about. Okay, and uh, one is uh, anything that's that means anything is big O of one or constant time, we don't care about. So what is what constitutes big O of one? Well, anything is an assignment operator. Uh, anytime, anytime there's like some math operation, whether you're printing, returning, or here in this case comparing. Uh, no matter what the size of the input is, those operations always take the same amount of time. If you're adding something or you're just printing something, it doesn't matter what the size of array A and array B is, those are always going to take the same amount of time to perform. So there's a constant time, meaning they don't change with the size of the input. They stay the same. Okay, so checking for if uh, array A of index at index I is less than array B at index J, it's going to be the same no matter what the size of those arrays are. All right, it's going to do it some amount of times, but that's not what we're worried about. We're worried about what's the time to perform the algorithm based on the size of the input. That's what big O is. And so the same thing here we're going to print out. It's going to take the same amount of time. So this already this if statement and the printout, we don't even care about. So we eliminate those. And now what to focus on are these two loops, right? Now, look at the outer loop. Uh, like before, if it's going, it's going through um, up to the length of the array. So from zero to length of the array, meaning it's going through this whole size of the array, and so that's going to be n, because um, if here it's 10, if array length is uh, 10, you know, we're going to go through 10 elements. If it's 100, we're going to go through 100 elements. So it's proportional, uh, the time it takes to go through the for loop is proportional to uh, the size of the input, which is array A, okay? And if we look at this, the inner for loop, it's kind of the same thing. But there's a difference, and like I said, there's two different inputs here, and so this is going from zero all the way to the second array's length. Now we can't denote this as n because that would mean if it was j equals zero, is j less than array a of that length? We could also say this was n, right? But we can't because it's a different array. So what you would do is you see kind of like the next letter in the alphabet. So we just call this one the uh, big O of m because we have to go through the length of the array, okay? Now, this, what does this mean? Um, in the second example we did in the last video, uh, we did, when there was a nested loop, this was, it was n squared. Now that's not the case here. n squared is not the answer for this um, algorithm. It's not the big O complexity. And the reason is, if we increase the length of array A, array B might stay the same. We don't know because these are two different inputs. Uh, we can't say for certain that they're going to uh, that they're going to increase um, together or not. They're two different inputs. We can assume that they don't, right? And what what that's telling us, what that's really telling us is all we can say is that this is big O of n times m. All right, it's not n squared, just n times m. And that's the answer because we can't determine n or m uh, if array A or array B, if they're increasing with the other array or not. Okay, these are two distinct inputs, so we have to leave them at that. Okay, so that's something you also have to make sure of 
when you're looking at these um, in an interview question. Look at the inputs. Are they distinct? And even if they're distinct, make sure they're not trying to trick you. And uh, maybe they're only using one of the arrays um, in in the actual like in the piece of code, right? Make sure you're using both of them. And if this was if both of these loops were using array a dot length, big O of n squared would be the answer. But it's not, so that's the answer. Okay. All right. On to the next one here. Uh, as you can see, this is going to look fairly similar with one difference, and that is that we have a third for loop this time. Okay. So. Again, just make sure you understand the, piece, understand the code, and this is pretty much the same as the last one. So let's just quickly go through it real quick. We have two different inputs, right? We have array A and array B. So two inputs. We have three for loops this time, and then we're printing. We're printing some pair. Okay. Uh, so what does that mean? First off, we know that printing is big O of 1. It doesn't matter what size of the input or anything. Printing is the same, takes the same time to... Um, takes the same time to execute, no matter what, right? So now we can get rid of that. Now we just have to worry about these for loops. Well, just like last time, in the last example, the first loop is going through the first array from zero to the length, okay? So that's big O of n. The second loop is going from uh, the beginning of the array to the length of the second array. So that's big O of m. And then this third loop, what's happening here? We're going from zero, or there's there's a hundred. We're going, we're performing a hundred thousand iterations. So we're going from zero to nine nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine um, every time. So what is so what's the big O of this then? Well, it's actually the same. This is still going to be big O of n times m. The reason is that we're going through. We're going over. 100,000 iterations on this third for loop every time. This is hard. This is a hard coded number. So, whenever the inputs of array A and array B increase or however much they grow, we're still only ever going to go through 100,000 um, iterations. And that's, that's kind of like the key for that's kind of the key for uh, understanding big O. It's the time to perform the algorithm. Uh, how long does it take to time to perform the algorithm based on the growth of the input, right? Here, no matter what the size of the input is and how much it grows, we're still only doing 100,000 inputs, uh, 100,000 iterations. So this is still big O of 1, okay? Um, I hope that makes sense. So again, real quick, just to kind of like reiterate. So first off, this is big O of n times m still. Uh, is for two distinct inputs. So what um, when we loop uh, the outer loop is happening, then we go to the inner loop. Uh, there's a both two different arrays, so we have to call one n and one m because we don't know how they're connected, and we can we have to assume that they're not at all. So one grows, the other one might not. All right. So because they're two distinct inputs, we have to keep them as such. And then with this third loop, it's always going to go over hundred thousand iterations. No matter what, so we have to. So it's not going to increase the time to perform that third for loop. Isn't going to change. All right, it's never going to change with this with the increase of array A and array B. Okay. All right, so that's the answer for that one. If you have any questions, or if you have any other questions that you're unsure of that you need help with, um, you know, leave them in the comments below, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And in the meantime, I will see you next video.